Last week, I tried to beat Elden Ring as Edward Elric, and he didn't deal a lot of damage, and he was short, and he couldn't break enemies' stance very fast. So I decided I had earned a little of salami as a treat. When I think of big old slams, I think of the king of evil, Ganondorf. If you want to watch these runs live, follow me on Twitch. We have a schedule, we have emotes, we have a community of cool people who hang out and keep me sane. Give me money on the Patreon if you want to do that, but mostly just like and subscribe. We're going to be playing through Elden Ring as a new character every week. Now, let's stop saying Dory no and start saying Dory ya. Yeah. It's time to slam now. We got the real jam going down. Since I was actually starting this after polishing off the Ed Elric build, I streamed the character creation. Generally, I like to do that before the stream starts because, personally, I think it's kind of boring to watch, but if you're into it, leave a comment, let me know either way. We'll start off as a champion since they have the most strength and oof, we need strength. Ignore the tech tight and get into Limgrave, then scoop up a crafting kit. I actually grabbed the Lord Sworn's Great Sword before remembering to get the horse. Whoops. It's not going to be our sword forever, but it will get things done for now. It's kind of like the sword he taunts with in Smash 4, the one he didn't use. We will use the Limgrave Pickle though and save the Goron dude. It's just better to kill him later. I'm not trying to be a hero. Couple of quick warps here. First one behind the Third Church of America and into the Dragon Barrow. Then we'll do some grave robbing before getting warped to Hyrule Castle and then warping back to Fort Pharaoh. Then we go into Fort Pharaoh for the Golden Rune 12 and Radigan Sword Seal, which is really important. The first two weapons we're using require a bit more dexterity than we have. Since our final weapon doesn't require any dexterity, I don't want to invest in that stat. Radigan Sword Seal is plus five to the physical stats, so boom, no problems. Obviously, we're gonna kill the big dragon, but our weapon doesn't bleed. So we need to wipe out Tomato Town for the bloody slash Ash of War. That'll add some bleed to the Lord's Born Greatsword, which is a bit slow. Generally, when you make a bleed weapon, you want something fast, like a dagger. Maybe two daggers? Come back next week. It's still faster to use this rather than anything else, though, and it gives us a dump truck of runes, mostly for vigor, but quite a bit for strength, too. Chat reminded me that I forgot to make Ganondorf beefy, while there, I also turned the body hair up. Fun fact, if you have bright red hair on puke green skin, you look like you have sores all over your body. This sword is a little too wimpy, wimpy, wimpy. In Kaelid, we can find something hefty, hefty, hefty. We can also levitate like Wile E. Coyote before he remembers gravity exists. Inside the caravan, the great sword, which isn't actually a great sword. I mean, it's great, it's a sword, and it's called the great sword, but it's classified as a colossal sword. Not sure why they did that. Even with Without upgrade materials, it hits incredibly hard. I still want upgrade materials though, so down into the Limgrave tunnels. Check out how good it is at killing miners. It's like the Darth Vader run all over again. Fun trick you can do with the Great Sword, it has 84% physical resistance when you block. So you can block with it, take very little damage, and then get a guard counter off for massive damage and even bigger stance damage. Another thing you can do is just hit shit really, really hard, like the Stone Talus. Bonk, bonk. Ronnie gives us a Moblin Calling Bell we can use later to call some Moblins. Then I test out our great sword on two NPC enemies, Nerd Juice and Patches. Because of its big honkin' size, it's great at catching rolls. It might be slow, but the hitbox is out for a long time, so these dorks don't stand a chance. Also, we killed Patches. Ganondorf doesn't believe in the sanctity of human life. The pickles we purchased will be perfect for powering up our powerful pop-up, but for a stronger sword, we need some stones in Lake Hylia. Here's some stones behind Stinky, then some silver pickles for later. Stones by the grace. Stone Stones by the lobsters, stones by the other lobsters, stones by the octopus, stones by the flower. These aren't on the map for whatever reason. Play chicken with a lobster and spirits bring up. We were three smithing stone threes away from getting the great sword to plus nine, but a pal in chat let me know there were three more in learning up. He sent me a map link. Get that map. Oh, oh, viruses. So many viruses. Oh, oh, there's so much pornography. No, I'm kidding. Um, okay. <laughs> Just kidding. They're on a body in the woods. Now we can really slam. We want to slam the clean rot knights the most, but since they're in the abandoned cave, I buy a dagger first to scoot through the poop. How do I justify using a dagger on Ganondorf? Better question. How does FromSoft justify locking the most useful talisman in the game behind a bunch of rot? The humongous sword is great at stance breaking these scrawny gals, so it's not that bad. And now we have the golden scarab for the rest of the bosses in the game. Bosses like Margot, the fell omen. 
I summoned Zant to help out, but didn't really need him. This sword is already dealing more damage than Ed to Elric did at the end of the build, maybe. I didn't do the damage calcs, but it feels a lot better already. Since this stream was just extending the final Ed Elric stream to be a decent length for the people who were in chat, that was going to be it for the day. I dipped down into the Weeping Peninsula really quick for some Sacred Tears, then grabbed the Strength Physic Tier and Limgrave, and then signed off. Stream 2 begins, and I kind of forgot what I was doing. I guess we'll go power bomb some Dodongos. I can't wait to bomb some Dodongos. On my way to the Dodongo Cavern, though, I send this knight into the god dang sky. Heavy weapons rule. The Dodongo Cavern is very easy. It's also full of stones and bats that are easier to kill with Ganon's sword than Ed throwing rocks. Sorry I'm comparing Ed to Ganon so much. These runs were just back to back and it was fresh in my mind. King Dodongo is a big old dragon, but our sword is big too. So I swing it really hard, break its stance, and smash its face. Easy win. Back to the Weeping Peninsula because I remembered what I needed to do. Get those moblins. This was my first time in the Impaler's Catacombs. I wonder why they call it that. Maybe it's the spikes on the ceiling that you get smashed into. That seems about right. To get through, I dip into one of the wall holes, then roll under the trap. There's some zombies in here. Not really worth mentioning, but killing four zombies with one swing of the sword certainly is. It feels very good. The boss is an Erdtree watchdog with some gargoyle assistance. Can you imagine using a giant greatsword and summoning some smaller enemies to distract your opponent? Beating the watchdog gives us the demi-human ashes, some smaller enemies to distract our opponents while we use a giant greatsword. He does exactly what I do, but better. I love our sword, but it's still not Dory Ya enough for me. For that, we need to go to the Red Main Castle, and since we haven't gone to Altus, it's not party time. The impassable Great Bridge is actually somewhat difficult to pass this time. Though dodging the catapults is basically the same thing you do to dodge the Pigman Slams on the way to the Forest Temple in Ocarina of Time. The actual hard part is the surprise pit around the side of the castle. That's our first death. We're doing great. Climb the big ladder into the castle. It's so supreme. Radon soldiers are no match for the power of F smash spam, even with their flamethrowers. Jaren's party is not activated. He hasn't got his parents out. Should we send them to a movie? Send them to a show? Hmm, let me think. It's gotta be long, though. Jaren's parents are a Wolfos and an Iron Knuckle, two bosses we actually haven't fought in this series so far, and now they're fighting together. I've seen a lot of people saying it doesn't make sense that these two are working together. Their fighting styles don't pair together in an interesting way, beyond uh, what if two things tried to hit you at the same time. Those people are right, I'm not arguing with them. My mob of moblins mobs the slobs and I clobber their knobs for gobs of damage. The second time. Crucible Knights are my least favorite field bosses. They don't bleed, their shield is huge, and they have a ton of poise, and they can still close the distance really fast. I honestly don't know what they're bad at. Still, that's seven bosses dead, only two deaths on our end, and the Ruin's Greatsword is acquired. It's a sword that's so great, it's gonna ruin all the other swords for me. We won't be using the Star Scourge Greatsword, since two-handing it makes two swords. That's how Wind Waker Ganon fights, I guess, but most Ganondorf's just two hand. To quote the cinematic classic Highlander, There can be only one. Right, right, Raggy. The Ruined Rape Sword requires 52 strength and 16 intelligence, two things that we don't have yet. You actually only need 35 strength if you're two-handing it, but still, we need runes for that. The Deku Scrub in Dragon Barrow is a great rune farm. It fights like every other putrid avatar, it just hits a lot harder. So you might die a few times, especially to Elven Stars Jr. That's when the avatar slams its staff into the ground and you have to run around avoiding beams for a while. Really annoying, it's my least favorite thing in FromSoft bosses attacks that just make you stop fighting for a second. Still, in six minutes, we kill it for over 100,000 runes. That's not enough, though. I guess we didn't need all that vigor right away, but it's so much easier and more fun to go through the early game with an abundance of HP. Up in Altus, I stomped the Stalfos Mariner, since it's easy, and dropped runes before heading into the Windhand Catacombs and killing everything on the way down. This is like the anti-Batman run. If I could, I'd go to Crime Alley and stomp Thomas and Martha myself. The boss is an Erdtree Burial Watchdog. Oh, that's not Zelda lore, though. Nerd Tree Burial Watch Hog? Pokemon and Zelda mix in Smash? I'll go with that. Garbage Rat dies, giving us the Grave Glove Wart Bell bearing one, letting us buy Grave Glove Warts one, two, and three. We have one and two from the Impaler's Catacombs, and four and five from earlier in the Windham Catacombs, so the Moblin Mob is now stronger, once we, you know, remember to use those. Continuing up Mount Doom, there's another Dodongo. I don't like calling two bosses the Magma Worm in my notes, so this one's listed as Dr. Worm. Good morning, how are you, Dr. Worm? He's not really 
really a doctor, but he is a real worm, and he dies like the first one. Then Moblin Queen Maggie, which feels kind of mean, because we summon Moblins to fight her, but oh well. This is actually the first time I've fought her as a boss. She's just like Gilka, but with some sorcerers and Moblins helping her out. Not too bad. Both of those were just for runes, since they're on the way to the Sombra Stone 6. The Sombra Stone 5 is in the Altus Tunnel, along with the Arsenal Charm Plus 1, which boosts our carrying capacity by 17%. It's not quite as good as the 19% from the Great Jar Arsenal, but that's way out of the way and makes you fight three NPC summons in a row after passing some very accurate Golem Archers. No thanks. Fee is the boss of the area. I hate her so much, I kill her twice. Still, we're not able to use the big sword, so I guess let's head into Raya Luparia Academy. Maybe kill a god. We have to kill a dragon first, but it's no match for the power of Slamendorf. Neither is the Onyx Lord, which will drop the Gravity Well Sorcery. It's super important since it's a ball of dark energy, like Ganondorf can use. I have to use it in this run, or it wouldn't be Ganondorf, and I definitely will. Later. Not on Wolf Link. I just hit him really hard. And I guess the Link we kill in this run is the Wolf version weird. We're actually pretty close to wielding the big sword, so I'll just go kill another Moblin Queen with the Moblins. Ganondorf is their true queen, and they kill her for me, rewarding us with the Ritual Sword Talisman. 10% more damage at full health. Now it's time to fight Ganon. Wait, I'm Ganon. I guess the timelines got mixed up. This must be the basketball timeline. We proved that he doesn't have a monopoly on power. Reggie, take freaking notes. My strategy is using the fully charged R2s while he's distracted to break his stance. That also just deals a lot of damage hitting him with the fully charged R2. After killing the other me, we can buy his armor and yeah, drip acquired. Now that we're truly decked out like the king of evil, let's go do some evil. Let's set the goddamn world on fire. If Radon gave us the Triforce of Power, the Triforce of Wisdom must lie with Nehru back in the castle. Dodge the big ball, fight off another hero of time, and boom, Nehru fight. She's hanging out in a love bubble while her babies throw books at us. But after we squish three of them, she drops down. Takes a few drops, but oh, oh, maybe it doesn't. Maybe we one cycle phase one Renala. Phase two takes like 20 seconds. We just hit so hard, and the weapon's only at plus six right now. Holy cannoli. Killing her gets us to the nice level with a nice number of runes. Ganondorf S tier. I don't care what else happens. Off to Hyrule, there's a Draconic Free Sentinel outside, but I whiffed some dodges, so I died. Total death number five. This could still be the first build to come in single digits for deaths. That would be pretty cool. Just like slamming the Draconic Free Sentinel to death. Inside Hyrule, there's another Deku Scrub that uses Elden Scars Jr. for another kill. Six total deaths. Half of them were to the Elden Stars Jr. That's pretty fun. We pass the DPS check of the Sewer Gargoyle, smashing it from behind, then scoop up the Ritual Sword Talisman for 30% more defense at full HP, and fight the Hyrule King Shade. I decide to leave the Moblins out of it, and usurp the Ghost King myself. It's fine, we hit like a truck and have pretty good defense. Killing him gives us enough runes to level up our endurance enough so we can wear the full drip and have the full sword in medium load. Let's go, gamers. A Gerudo Trader is trying to stop us from fighting more Morgoth, but not for long. Big hits, big damage. Morgoth gives us some trouble, putting our tender heart in his spirit sword blender and spinning around into a beautiful oblivion. Here I realized that our moblins were still only plus two. We didn't actually go level them up any higher. So I came back for one more rendezvous, then I'm through with Margu. Hilda wants us to go burn down the Deku tree. Sounds fun. So we ride through the Forbidden Lands, and I remember I need a staff to cast our Darkness Sorcery. The Gravity Staff is in Kaelid Swamps, and I fall to my guts. Shoot, that's nine deaths. We can't die again if I want to be in single digits. Up to the lift of rolled and into the mountaintop of the giants where I use the darkness ball on this dung beetle. Everyone see it? It's a darkness ball. I used it. I used Ganondorf's magic. Everyone saw it and agrees. Since that drops a somber stone seven, I go grab the eights and nines from Grail then smash Ekizykes for the runes to level it up. I always kill Exicus for the extra runes. I don't know how to say his name right every time and I probably say it differently every time. In fact, I'm pretty sure I said it differently this time, but I, I don't have a butt. I don't have a butt. <laughs> Weird name. I skipped Borealis and grabbed a Sacred Tear on my way to fight the big Goron. While I think I'm pretty good at this fight, he just hits hard enough that you can die in two hits. Oh, and sometimes his hitboxes go to the wrong place, like his meteors hitting by his feet. I've been janked by that too many times, so I don't die to it this time. I just chug that jug, baby. Killing the Fire Giant will let us burn down the world and warp seven years into the future to see the fruits of our rule. Everything is broken now. There's tornadoes everywhere, monsters everywhere. It's a calamity. Nailed it. This world's so 
Ta. In Crumbling for Amazula, we can fight a duo of badasses who cut off the skin of gods. They're called the Bad Bad Boys. During the big roll, I figured out I can hit a fully charged R2 at the top of the pillar once. The second time, it didn't work, but the first time was pretty cool. And speaking of the first time, we beat these Bad Bad Boys the first time we fight them. The road to Malaketh is paved with swag jumps, dragon crest shield talismans plus two for physical damage resistance, somber dragon stones, and draconic three sentinels. He killed us, meaning that we're now tied with Leonardo for the least amount of deaths. As long as we can keep it clean for the rest of the run, Malaketh killed me, shoot, but not because I was too aggressive. If anything, I was playing too cautiously. Since we no longer have to worry about trying not to die, I get aggressive the second time, break his stance, and deal so much damage. Back to Hyrule, and god, it looks like hell. Love it. Gideon isn't actually free. Our weapon is a little slow, and he gets his spells out really fast. They deal a lot of damage and cover a lot of area as well, so after he kills the moblins, I was nervous. But I didn't need to be. He just hit him. Godfrey hits me with some baloney. We hit him to activate phase two, but he hits us with a hitbox in the cutscene that knocks us down, then gets to grab me at the end of my animation to stand up. I almost don't want to count that as a death, but baloney is part of Elden Ring DNA. Next try, I time the stance break to happen at the start of phase two, so we get a big old slam and kill the king of Hyrule. Now, Hyrule has no Deku tree, no king, the only thing left to take is their god. I buried the lead a bit here talking about deaths. Yeah, low deaths would be cool, but we're actually on pace to beat this game in less than five hours for the first time in the channel's history. Radagon awaits and I don't get a great room. That would waste time, especially because we didn't kill Godric. Radon's Great Rune is fine, but it would mean climbing the Divine Tower of Kaelid, which is time and possibly a death because that tower is a nightmare. I'd rather just throw myself against Radagon and the Triforce Spirit over and over again until we win. First try doesn't go great. We die, even though we're dealing great damage. Round two, we manage to get to the Triforce Spirit with a Moblin left. He doesn't last long, but I will avenge you, little dude. Elden Beast has slow enough dead frames after its attacks that you can get off fully charged R2. It's the best way to break its stance and get a massive critical hit in its weird cracked tummy. Hitting the arbitrary weak points of a boss to deal massive damage? Yeah, I think we're playing Zelda. Elden Star's Senior comes out. It's like Elden Star's Junior, but worse since you can't really dodge it. I've died to it too many times, underestimating its damage and getting chipped to death, so I chug that jug and then slam that god into the ground. We beat Elden Ring as Ganondorf with 14 deaths, killing 28 bosses, and in 4 hours and 50 six minutes which if i check my math is less than five hours it's the fastest build yet which means that we'll put it up in s tier and then shuffle some other stuff around for three builds per tier vader's now at the top of a alucard's now at the top of b wolverine is now at the top of c sans is still at the bottom i'm glad you like the video but he's stinky what made Ganondorf so good? Damage. Doing a lot of damage kills bosses faster, which makes the run faster, but also gives them less time to hit you. They also have less time to hit you if their stance is broken, which the Ruins Greatsword is great at doing. And if all of that weren't enough, we're also wearing some decent armor. So if we took a hit, it wasn't the end of the world. We didn't need any magic flasks, so creating damage is an option, and a pretty good one. If you want to watch these runs live, follow me on Twitch. We're streaming three times a week and having a pretty great time doing it. If you want to support the channel with money, go over to the Patreon. It's the best way to give me money, and if you like Dungeons & Dragons, check out my other channel, where I make characters for that.